Hey guys, we're going to put it all together for graphing trig functions. Um, I'm going to do three examples of problems, maybe a fourth one. Um, but uh, this video should help you be able to graph without using a graphing calculator or Desmos. But we are going to then use Desmos and or graphing calculator to check our work and make sure we've done it correctly. And so the point here is to figure out if you can do that. Sorry for that loud airplane. Wow, that was loud, wasn't it? Anyway, we're going to work on graphing right now. So here's our first problem. Okay, here's our first function. f of x is equal to negative 3 sine pi over 2x plus 1. Now, as always, when we graph, we need to find the amplitude. We need to find the period. We need to find the translation. Uh, Up-down translation. And we need to find the translation. Uh, left and right. Okay? Right and left. And so if we find all th those things, that will help. So amplitude, first of all, comes from the coefficient on the trig function. So our amplitude is 3, but it's reflected. Okay? So that tells us, rather than the normal sine graph... I happen to be by an airport, so it does get loud in the background. I apologize. So uh, we're going to reflect this, so our graph is going to have this look to it as a sign. So we want to keep that in mind. Um, and the reflection comes from the negative. All right, the period. The period we're going to get by taking the coefficient on the x, pi over 2, and dividing that by 2 pi. No. Oh my gosh, I almost always make this mistake, and I apologize. Our period, the period of sine is 2 pi, and so we divide that by the pi over 2. So we always take the coefficient on the x for that. So this is going to equal 2 pi times 2 over pi, which is equal to 4. So 4 is our period. Now, translation up and down, that is going to come from any number that we add to the actual trig function. So we're adding 1, so that means we're going to go up 1, all right, it, which means that our midline is at y equals 1. So drawing that midline, I think, really helps with drawing the graph, all right? And then finally, translation left or right. Now, if you'll remember, we would generally have something like uh, sine pi over 2x plus 3 in parentheses. So we're taking the trig function of the whole thing. But as you notice, we're not adding in, it's just sine of pi over x like that. The one is not being added inside the trig function. So there is no left or right translation. There's none. Okay? So now we have everything we need, and we want to use that then to draw a graph. So let's do that. So the first thing we do is we make an axis. Um, and then we want to draw the midline. And so here is our midline at y equals 1. Then the amplitude is 3. So we go 2, 3, 4. And we go 0, negative 1, negative 2. So now we are, if you can see it, we are three above and three below the midline. Then the next thing we want to do 
is we want to label the x-axis. Now, since our translation left right is none, that means zero is our starting point. And then that means we go to four. Now, that's one period from zero to four. You could put this four anywhere you want. Um, I just usually put it out far enough so I can cut it in half to make two, cut those in half, one, and three, and label those. And these are going to be the points where the zeros or the maximums and minimums are. Now, the thing you need to remember is that you're not starting on the x-axis when you're moved up or down. You always start where the midline is. So there's our zero, zero point on the sine graph is now at zero, one, because it's been moved up. Now, if you remember, our graph has to look like this. So the maximum is going to be at one, or in this case, the minimum at one, negative two. The next zero will be at two, which is on the midline. And then the three will go all the way up to four, and then we'll come back to the zero. And then if we connect those, that is one period. Now, to finish this graph, you would what? You would go two periods, right? So you would five, six, seven, eight. And you would know that this graph would go like this. And you could be a little more accurate by, whoops, plotting those points appropriate. So don't plot them on the x-axis. Plot them on the midline. All right. And if you do that, there's your second period. So now I have a feeling that the graph is correct. So let's take a look at Desmos and see if it really is. And so I've done that quickly. Number one, notice y equals negative three sine, then the pi x over two is in parentheses. And then I add the one outside that, okay, to move it up or down. And then just for kicks, I often like to draw the midline so I can see that and if those points are gonna be in the right spot. Now you notice if you look at the y-axis, it goes through y equals one. So I can pick those points, two, one, four, one, six, one, eight, one. I went through those, the maximum and the minimums, negative one, two, five, negative two, three, four, negative one, four, seven, four, et cetera. And now, I can compare this graph to my graph. Does it match? All right, did I do the things correctly? Look at that, two, one. So if that's the case, if I did things correctly, then I now have a good feeling that I have done this correctly, okay? and I can check it, all right? Do those points match? And they do, and so now I feel like I've done it correctly. Now, you may have to, I was lucky my scale was the right one, um, but if your scale isn't right, you may have to write it up to make sure it's correct. And drawing the midline in there is very helpful. It shows you the symmetry when you divide it. Okay, let's go to problem number two. Okay, so problem number two is a cosecant graph. I don't think I've done very many of these, so I wanted to do one. So, same issues. We want to find the amplitude. We want to find the period. We want to look at translation up or down. And we want to look at translation right or left. Okay? And all those will help us do the graph. So very quickly, let's do this again. D 
the amplitude, all right, a negative 2. So what does that mean? The amplitude is 2. This one is also reflected, okay? All right, now if you remember cosecant, the sine graph goes like this, right? So cosecant comes and touches the sine graph and has its asymptotes in between. So you want to keep that in mind. So when you reflect it, these go down here and these go up there, all right? And if you wish, you can think that you can now erase the sine curve and then you can sort of visualize it flipping up and down. All right. Okay. Period. So the period, we take the period of cosecant is 2 pi and we divide that by the coefficient on the x which is pi, which gives us a period of 2, okay? Translation, up or down. If you'll notice, we have the cosecant of a parentheses, but there is no number added or subtracted to this. So there is no translation up or down. That means the midline is just the x-axis y equals zero, all right? Translation left or right. Now, in this case, we got two things in parentheses. So what we should do is we should take that pi x minus pi over four, and we should factor the pi so that we get x minus one fourth. This tells us we are going one fourth to the right, okay? And very important to remember that as you proceed forward. So, one-fourth to the right. Now, let's put it all together into a graph, okay? Hmm. So here's our graph. We're going to draw our graph. And um, first thing, we go up or down to the midline is the x-axis. So we can go 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2. That's the max and mins will be at 2 and negative 2. The other thing we need to remember then is we are moved one-fourth to the right, and then the period is two. So what I like to do is I like to mark the period. Here's two, and then this is one, and then that gives me an idea what one-fourth is, okay? So one-fourth is about that big, so I can repeat that here, all right? Now, here's the big deal. This is your zero point, okay? This one then becomes how far you have to go to get a period of two, one-fourth beyond. So let me go ahead and mark these other fourths just so that we have them all. Now, we're starting here and we're finishing here. Now, if you looked at the cosecant graph, the cosecant graph, remember the sine went like that and then the cosecant was like this. So the asymptote was right in the middle and it got moved over, in our case, one fourth. So right in the middle from zero to two is one, but you move it over one fourth our asymptote should be right there, over one-fourth, okay? And it will be right here. At the end, we'll have an asymptote. And it will be right here at the start. 
So you got to draw all three of those asymptotes. Now I have those. And then in here, I'm going to have a sine curve. Right? But that sine curve gets reflected. Okay? And that means the cosecant is probably right here. So negative 2 minimum, or well, it would be a maximum in cosecant, and positive 2, and it approaches the asymptotes. So I believe this would be a really good picture of the cosecant graph. right there. And of course, now you go four more fourths from two and a quarter to to three and a quarter, and you'd have another asymptote. And then you would start the graph all over again. You could do a second period. So let's check this one with Desmos. Okay, let's do a little check on this graph. So, as we can see, we are going um, upside down here, then right side up. So, we've got them in the right order. Here's our y-axis and our x-axis. Okay. And then if we look, I labeled these by quarters. So notice this asymptote is one and a quarter, which is exactly what I had here. One fourth, two fourth, three fourths, five fourths. One, two, three, four fourths, five fourths right here. Six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths, nine fourths. And so you can see as you start looking, um, you can see the five-fourths asymptote will be right there. The next asymptote will be this one right here, which will be four more over and just before you get to two and a half. So this is two and a quarter on our graph. Here's two and a half. So we're, those are in the correct spots. And so how did I do that? On Desmos, I did my scale. If, oh, I can't make it come up. But the scale I did as one-fourth, so it would match what I did here. But those are the correct graphs. Um, and I could have said x equals... Um, 1.25, x equals 2.25, x equals 3.25. I could have marked those all the way down, and it would have drawn these asymptotes. All right? And I could have even set it up as a formula as well. But that's um, pretty good. I'm pretty confident I have done this correctly at this point. Next problem. Okay, everybody, here's a little problem I found online that we can do for um, practice. Um, what we do in this case is we're given a graph and we need to write out the actual equation. Couple of notice it has amplitude, period. It has what's called phase shift. Phase shift is the left right translation. And then it did not put down the up-down translation. There's a reason for it in this case, but and we'll talk about that right now. So, um, first of all, if I looked at a graph, the first thing I would do is draw the midline, okay? Um, which means halfway between the maximums and the minimums. So if the minimum is negative 2, and maximums are at two. And this would work out the same way like if we had 
um, secant, cosecant, minimums, maximums, uh, excuse me, maximums, minimums. We're trying to find out what those numbers are. That'll help you find the phase shift because the midline's halfway between them. So since the midline is halfway between the maximums and minimums, in this case, the midline midline is y equals zero. So in the equation, we're going to put plus zero for that, which we don't have to actually put. Okay. Um, the other thing we can check is the amplitude. Since we go from negative 2 to 2, that distance is twice the amplitude. So twice the amplitude, or excuse me, the, um, yeah, excuse me. Twice the amplitude is equal to 4, which is the distance between the maximum and minimum. Therefore, the amplitude is equal to 2. So right there. And by the way, I'm going to write the equation for this trig function right here. Okay? Which is a sine. I could have written it for this function right here, which would be a cosine. Okay? So you can write it for either sine or cosine. It doesn't matter. All right? I make the amplitude 2 because that's our normal trig function right there. I see that. Okay, the period. So the period of a, trig of a sine is 2 pi. But what's my period here? I can actually see it and count it up. I'm going from... Uh, got to erase something here. Yeah, I'm going from right here, which is 2.25 pi down to 0.25 pi. So this 2.25 pi, and this is 0.25 pi. And so I want the distance between those. So my period is 2.25 pi minus 0.25 pi which is equal to 2 pi in this case. Now, what's the phase shift? The phase shift is the left-right translation. And in this case, I'm moving the trig function over 0.25 pi. That's the translation, OK? Now we need to write the equation, OK? The equation. Now, writing the equation is a little different because if you'll remember, in the equation, this the equation is A sine uh, B X plus C plus D. Now, we already know there is no up-down movement, so D is zero. So this is plus 0. We also know the amplitude is 2. So that's 2. So we have 2 sine. Now what we have to find is the B and the C. Now, the easiest one to use is the phase shift. The phase shift is 0.25 pi. So that's what the C value would be. So we would write x minus 0.25 pi. Now, why is it minus 0.25? That's because it goes to the right. All right. OK. And therefore, that was x minus. Now, the b value, it, we take that number, we take the period 2 pi and divide it the period of a normal sine function and divide it by b and that should equal the period that we got which was 2 pi so this tells us that 
2 pi equals b times 2 pi, and we divide both sides by 2 pi, that tells us b equals 1. So you have to do this backwards arithmetic to find the b value. So the b is 1. So this would be 1 times x minus 0.25 pi plus 0. So there's our correct equation. Okay? Now, go through that again. First amplitude, first the up, down, the midline. Then you get the phase shift and the period. Inside the parentheses, if the phase shift is right, that would be minus C. If it's to the left, that would be plus C. So we write X minus 0.25 pi. Okay? Then we got to get the B value. And to get the B value, you take the normal period and divide it by B, and that will equal what the new period is. And so the nor so you solve that equation for B, and in our case, I get B equals 1. Okay? So what we want to do now is check the problem. Okay? So let's shrink everything here. We've written the equation for the graph. The equation that we got was 2 sine uh, 1x, so just x minus 0.25 pi, and then plus 0. So this was the equation that we got. So now let's graph that equation and see if it matches the graph that we originally had, okay? So we're gonna do that. And, and there we go. And so now I'm gonna put that equation in. Okay, so putting that equation in, I put two function sine Okay, I think I fixed it. So we have two sine, and then we want to type x. Oh, give me a minute here. Okay, I fixed it. x uh, minus 0.25 pi. So there's our graph. Now, in order to check to see if it matched the original graph, I need to work on the scales here a little bit. So the y-axis doesn't need to be too tall, so we can go from uh, negative 3 to 3, and we'll step that by 1s, okay, which is the scale. And then the x-axis, uh, we could start at 0, and... We want to go to, um, let's say, uh, the period is 2 pi, so let's go to um, 3 pi. And the key here is we want to scale it um, by, let's go with pi divided by 4s because then we'll be able to kind of see if we're in the right spot. I think that works. Okay. And so, as we look at the graph, if you'll remember, we started off at 0.25 pi, which is pi over 4. We ended up at 2.25 pi, which is there. The maximum went up to 2 and was at 3 pi over 4. You can check the graph, and then 7 pi over 4 is the minimum, and 5 pi over 4, which is 1.25 pi, was right there. So I believe we have everything that we need to see, and that matches our original graph. So I'm good with that, if you are, okay?
me see if I can make this browse again. There we go. Yeah, there's our original. And as you can see, it went through the same spots, 0 0.25, 1.25, 2.25, the maximums at 3 pi over 4, and then 7 pi over 4 is where the minimum is. So we have written the correct equation for that graph, okay? So that's how you check. You graph what your answer, and you check and see if it matches. All righty, that's all we have for you. Good luck. This is putting it all together.